The stock market has rallied considerably in 2019. Is it possible that the central bank's balance sheets have also expanded to such an exaggerated level? Of course, based on what we have seen so far, globally, central banks are attempting to create massive inflation at the expense of the saver. Massive disruptions will inevitably occur, but in the meantime, asset prices can certainly continue to rise to astronomical levels. The wealth gap will continue to widen as a result, and eventually, everything will revert to the mean as it always does. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at the one trillion dollar Fed flood. I'm going to talk about several issues today and I wanted to break that down here. The Fed is going to print one trillion dollars in total in a few month period and what do you think that impact will be to the markets and of course to inflation. Inflation will be felt at at a later time. It's not necessarily that they print money and immediately the economy is feeling that and you will see that come up with the jobs and so on. No, they print money and then it finds its way through the financial system. Below that, you could see that the global economy remains weak. And essentially, we have several indicators to get into today. We're going to be looking at the PMIs. I'm going to be talking about what's happening with the Baltic Dry Index as as well and of course wanted to show you what's going on with the store closures 9300 I believe is the number but I'll give you that as well in this video so let's get into that right away we're looking at the markets right now and of course day after day after day after day we see that they are doing so fantastically the S&P 500 looks like it will achieve 3200 in tomorrow's trading session the Dow Jones getting ever closer to that 30,000 mark we'll see what's going to happen with the US markets of course because they have been extremely strong thanks to none other than the Federal Reserve and you can see the balance sheet of the fed of course going towards 4.1 trillion we will see this probably in the next update as of i think thursday we should get those numbers so i will keep you up to date on that but right now it is just below 4.1 trillion dollars so let's take a look at this this is from the fred but charles hugh smith likes to write on top of them and he made some good points here wanted to bring it up to you i think it's important to understand how much money is being pumped into this system so you see what's happening here this is the Fed's balance sheet going back from probably, let's say, early 2000s at this point here. And you can see what occurred. You know exactly what it is. This is just showing you the fact that they added $336 billion added in panic printing. Okay, we know that already. This has been the primary driver in the stocks and what we have seen just over the last couple months. So it's broken down further. Asset purchases right here, $336 billion repos 213 billion total 549 billion dollars in panic printing to prevent gravity from crushing the markets down over here and by the way i like the fact that he put markets in quotes we all know how manipulated they are the fed has promised another 200 billion dollars in repos and 300 billion dollars in asset purchases so the true total exceeds 1 trillion dollars in panic money printing it is disclosed already based on their numbers numbers that the Fed's balance sheet will go and actually exceed 4.5 trillion in January of 2020. Very short period of time. They are actually going to exceed the level at which they were at before. So if you can see where I'm drawing over here, that's that 4.5 trillion mark and they will go beyond that in a very short period. I will bring that to you. Of course, we can celebrate on the day. You know the traders are going to be celebrating. That's for sure. The investors will be so happy that they're Money has devalued to the point where the only thing that keeps it going is more money printing. Fed officials stress that things like buying treasury bills to grow holdings aren't a form of stimulus because they aren't designed to influence longer term borrowing costs as crisis era bond buying was. They are still talking about this today and I think it's an absolute joke, truly. But have no fear because as you can see at the bottom of the page, although we anticipate higher volatility 
volatility in the repo market in year end, we do not believe it will spread to other markets such as credit. Nor do we believe that banks will be forced to sell US treasuries as a means of clearing their balance sheet and thereby pushing interest rates meaningfully higher. We're going to see if UBS is correct or of course that pressure will be applied and something will have to come in to stop it. They're trying to flood the market with liquidity right now to prevent these issues from occurring but their level of control on the actions that they're doing right now is in fact limited. Trying to control interest rates is actually not very easy. It's not punching it into a computer. This is a complex system that requires them to be intervening on a daily basis. Now I wanted to get into the statistics here. The economy isn't what they say it is, but it is very mixed. You're going to see some that are doing very well, others that are doing terribly, and some in between. This happens to be from the New York Fed. This is their now cast model, and I'll show you the GDP now stats as well. But right here you can see 0.69% for that GDP. That doesn't look very good. Over the course of the last few months, things have really really looked a lot weaker. It has come up somewhat here, as you can see, but it's still not where they had touted this would be. The economy is clearly weaker than the expectations that were initially put out. If you look at the GDP now statistic, they are forecasting 2%. So definitely much higher. There had been a big change because this was at 0.3 previously in November and now has moved up to 2%. So we'll see where that goes. I just want to show you those statistics because of course we need to be looking at all of them, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is the Baltic Dry Index and it has had a wild ride in 2019. So we're looking at a low point earlier this year and of of course, it rocketed higher, achieving over 2,500 in the particular index, now sitting at 1,355. So it had a true roller coaster year. There's no doubt about it. And you might think, well, this is not far back enough. How was it before? What was it looking like? Well, if I go all the way back here, we're going to see what it looked like. And it was intense. In the 2000s, we watched this rocket to a record high. It is nowhere near that. But even if you take out the anomaly in the situation, it's still a lot weaker than where it was previously. We know this because of all the different freight, every type, they're all down. We have been watching this very clearly. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's look at the PMIs for the Eurozone. They are still looking weak here. However, in the US, they've come up somewhat. Actually, I don't know if I pulled that data up for you, but I'll just show you the way the PMIs have looked. So they were getting, in the United States, they were getting weaker. They were in contraction territory. Then they started to come up somewhat. Okay, we saw that. And now that has just come down just ever so slightly, but that could be a blip. So we're gonna see if it actually continues to trend back upwards into the positive territory. I'll bring you some up-to-date information for now the eurozone is a lot like japan which is just simply struggling but look at this for a moment here german french manufacturing their pmis both of them have done terribly since basically the beginning of 2018 just as i've shown you with so many other statistics uk manufacturing and services pmis both of these have done terribly over this period as well 2018 and onward this is australia same thing services business activity versus manufacturing Manufacturing output peaking out in 2017 and falling ever since. The stats are here. You can see if you look really quickly here on the left hand side, both of these below 50, and that means it is a contraction. Australia, China, Europe, Japan, everywhere you look, it is contracting. This could potentially turn around, but as of right now, still looking very weak. For Japan, you're seeing the exact same thing. I'm not even sure how they have any statistics going on. Everything should just be at the bottom flatlined, but here they are anyway. This has come down, same situation, 2018 and onward. This is the store closures giving you a record level 9,300 store closures so far this year. The store openings 4,392. This is from CoreSight. They manage all this information. They've changed the way that their reports are put out, but at least the numbers there, that's really all we care about for the most part. 9,300 stores so far. 
all different types of industries are laying people off right now at apparently what is the best economy ever. Morgan Stanley announced that it's downsizing about 1,500 employees, primarily in New York and London. They give you the details, of course, in here. They specifically state the fact that they're worried about the global economy and they're getting rid of some people. It's only 1,500, obviously, when you see how many people these huge banks actually do employ. It's small in comparison, but it doesn't matter because we are seeing that industry wide then you look at what's going on in the automotive industry this is just a little bit more general motors will lay off 814 hourly and salaried workers in detroit they're saying that the workers will be relocated but of course we have seen that in previous instances and then they didn't get their jobs back this is an update on one I had done recently. The trucking giant Celadon declared bankruptcy on December 8th. That leaves about 3,800 employees suddenly jobless weeks before Christmas. So that number grew because I believe I quoted 3,000 last time around. Now, 3,800 people. This is a massive company for this particular industry and we could see it's affecting a lot of people. Now, they had their own issues internally in the company, but it just shows you all industries are being affected one way. Way, shape or form vox media to cut hundreds of freelance jobs ahead of the changes in the california gig economy laws now you're looking at this one example but it's just a continuation because i've shown you so many others a whole bunch of media companies laying a lot of people off right now and if you want to keep track of all of this information, the website I go to all the time to check this out, whether it's the store closures, layoffs, bankruptcies, so on, dailyjobcuts.com. I want to empower everybody so that they can look up this information on their own and they don't have to wait for the next Money GPS video. That's all. I'm going to end the video there. If you found that informative, smash the like button. I do appreciate that very much. If you want to build a business, if you want to learn about passive income, if you want to understand how e-commerce works and maybe how it can work for you, there's nothing holding you back. The course that I created is completely free and it's available at the amazongps.com. If you want to know about the financial system, if you want to know how to make money, all the foundational principles, everything is located in these two books. You can check it out at the link in the description. You'll be able to flip through the pages of the books to see if you like them. If you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. Hang on a second now. Wait a minute. Have you seen this video? It's really good. It's got a lot of detail. Check it out. I'll see you there.